With all the UFO sightings reported over the years in America, the logical question is, if they really exist, why don't they visit the White House? And then there they were, all of a sudden, on July 26, 1952. The Air Force tried and failed to intercept up to a dozen UFOs in the sky over the White House. The press conference two days later became the largest media event since the end of World War II. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. With all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. In my position in the Research and Development Organization of the Bureau of Aeronautics and of the Navy Department, I am thoroughly familiar with both our aircraft and our guided missiles programs and can state without reservation that the Navy has no saucer-shaped aircraft or missile in any of these programs. Headlines around the country aroused so much attention that the Air Force formed an official investigative unit, Project Blue Book. With me now are two retired Air Force colonels who were actively involved in that inquiry. Colonel Robert Friend, who headed up Project Blue Book for five years, and Colonel William Coleman, a former Air Force squadron commander who was Pentagon spokesman and chief of public information for the Air Force. Colonel Friend, Colonel Coleman, welcome. Gentlemen, has the Air Force been involved with UFOs before the White House incident? Uh, during World War II, our pilots saw what were called gremlins and foo fighters. These were fireballs that appeared to fly along with our aircraft. Hmm. We were concerned that these so-called foo fighters or <clears throat> fireballs might be foreign weapons that could threaten our national security. And did the Air Force ever try to chase a UFO? Yes, in fact, in 1948, one of our pilots crashed in pursuit of a UFO. The story made headlines all over the world. As I understand it, that crash added emphasis to the conclusion that UFOs were extraterrestrial visitors. That's true. But the Air Force rejected the conclusion on the grounds of insufficient evidence. Mm. Even the name of the project was changed from sign to grudge during that period to preclude this unhealthy association. However, by the time Blue Book involved, we started running into trouble. Hearings and inquiries regarding the way in which we were performing UFO investigations in every instance the Congress of the United States concurred hmm. in the way in which we conducted these projects. However, we were not disappointed with the 1969 decision to discontinue Project Blue Book. Uh -huh. Out of the 12,000 reported UFO sightings, only 700 remain unexplained. Of that remainder, a hundred of them really worried us. Why was that? Because these 100 sightings involved the two criteria that defined a worrisome phenomenon, high strangeness and high credibility, meaning that highly credible multiple witnesses, like military airline pilots, see something they've never seen before. Have either of you ever seen a UFO? Yes, it was 1955, and I was a squadron commander at the time. We were flying a B-25 over Alabama, where we spotted a strange silvery object some 25,000 feet above us, heading in the same direction. Since we were overtaking it, I changed course and eventually got within an eighth of a mile of it, literally right on top of the thing. So you must have gotten a fairly good look at it. We certainly did. The whole crew. It was wingless, a disc some 70 feet in diameter, 15 feet thick at the center, your average run-of-the-mill flying saucer. And what happened then? It performed an astonishing maneuver. One second it was there, the next it was gone. But we chased it and caught sight of it again. It was skimming over a farmer's field, kicking up vortexes of red dust as it flew. We closed in on it from behind the trees, but it vanished. Mm -hmm. Did you make a report of this incident? Well, I wrote up reports. I was later debriefed by an intelligence officer. And years later, when I was on Project Blue Book, I tried to find my report. It was not in the files. Not in the files. Hmm. Now you say you saw this object at point blank range. Could it have been a balloon or an experimental aircraft? Absolutely not. It displayed a level of technology far beyond anything I had seen on the Earth then and now. With this advanced level of technology, were you ever concerned that the object could be a threat to national security? No, not necessarily a threat to our national security. But I was uneasy about these UFOs because they were able to accomplish aerial feats that we couldn't. The apparent capability of these objects could possibly represent a threat to our national security. What's become of Project Blue Book? That's it, Mike. It was canceled in 1969 and will not be reactivated. Hmm. Well, Colonel Coleman, Colonel Friend, thank you both. And while we're on the subject of Blue Book, let's hear another view from a scientist currently working for the government. Now, because he has insisted on anonymity, both his appearance and his voice have been altered. But his credentials have been thoroughly researched by the investigative team of Bill Moore and Jamie Chandray. 
They've given him the code name Condor. Just under a low level um, effort by the Air Force to collect information on sightings. Uh, I had a very minimal staff of uh, uh, one officer, an NCO, a secretary, and a scientist. The interesting, most exciting reports that came into Blue Book uh, were often siphoned off by what they call moles within the organization. Those reports were. Uh, uh, were pulled out of the files and never returned and just simply sent forward. The whole effort, uh, in, as far as Blue Book was concerned, was that uh, they tried in uh, every way they could to simply um, dismiss and explain away sightings. They certainly didn't want unknowns. The effort of Blue Book was to minimize uh, the effects of these reports and try to explain away as many as they could. And of course it worked. It worked in the fact that it closed down uh, Project Blue Bug in terms of the Air Force's involvement, official Air Force involvement, public involvement with the subject of UFOs. Of course, we know that they carried on with a covert operation after that. When Blue Book closed down, the official U.S. government position was that UFOs didn't exist, and Americans accepted this contention as fact. Or did we? Subsequent reports were discredited, relegated to the tabloids at the supermarket checkout counter. After Blue Book's final report, anyone who claimed to see a UFO was considered some kind of nut. So most sightings go unreported, particularly sightings by aircraft pilots.